everyone, Night Fox here, welcoming you to another episode of Tech Tuesday. Now, in this episode of Tech Tuesday, I'm going to actually go over a new purchase that I've made for my YouTube channel, and that is the new Rode NT1A mic that I've gotten alongside with the PreSonus AudioBox i1 USB interface. Um, so basically, a little backstory for those that have been following my YouTube channel and have listened to my audio commentaries and stuff like that. I've actually been using this right here, which is the uh, Logitech G930 headset. It works great for beginners. Um, I actually broke it. See, I actually did this little video just last week. This one right here. Oh, it's going 88. Oh, I didn't uh -huh. do bad. I didn't do bad. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah. Did you throw your I broke it. <laughs> you broke your headset? Yes. See, I wasn't lying. Um, but yeah, I was using this. This was the headset that I used for uh, doing my YouTube commentaries. And it worked great because it allowed everything to be hands-free. It also allowed everything to be wireless so I could step away uh, if I was like say in a Skype call or uh, doing a commentary and I needed to get up and go somewhere else real quick, I could do so. That works great for this. However, it did have a lot of white noise in the background, stuff that I really didn't like and tried to filter out and it wasn't top quality so I decided to make a purchase. Um, a lot of people go for the Blue Snowball, and unfortunately I don't have that that I can compare for you. Um, you're more than welcome to take a look at some of the other YouTube channels out there that actually do reviews on, you know, the Blue Snowball versus the Blue Yeti or the Rode mics or anything like that. Basically, this is just going to show you the difference between my headset and this mic. That way, if you decide in the future that you want to upgrade and get a mic such as this, uh, you can do so. I'll provide links in the description to where you can pretty much buy everything that you're going to see here. Um, that way, you can download and know what you're going to be getting and stuff. So basically, we're going to just hop in. I'm going to give you a little bit of different sound audio clips that you can kind of compare. Uh, right now, you're hearing it on my camera, which is not bad for a, for a camera at least. Um, but if I go ahead and switch it over... And now you can hear everything on the headset. So it's working perfectly. Uh, but as you can hear, if I'm just quiet for just a second, you hear that there's a little bit of background noise. And that's something that I always have to spend a little bit extra time filtering out. And it can be a real nuisance, especially if you're a perfectionist like I am and really want to have that good audio. Um, you don't want that white noise in the background causing that little extra whine. You want to get rid of that. So that's why I've decided to go with the Rode NT1. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to switch over to it right now. And now you can hear me talking from the mic itself. Um, so there's a lot of different things in play here. Obviously, the mic, if you be quiet, you hear this. Absolutely nothing. Very bare minimum white noise whatsoever. And on top of that, I've actually got my computer fan running pretty high right now. Um, so there should be a little bit of white noise, but it seems to filter out those type of noises perfectly. Um, in the minute, I'm actually going to drop right around the corner over here. Uh, right on the other side of this wall is actually an air conditioning vent that I've had a lot of issues with that I've had to turn off while I'm doing recording or else it would be too loud. I'm actually going to turn that on um, right now. I'll do it right now, in fact. And so now it's on. I don't know if you guys can hear it or not, but if you could, let me show you what it would sound like on the headset. First off, here's what it sounds like on the NT1. And now if I switch over to the headset, and as you can see as I switch it, you can now hear the air conditioner a lot more prominently than you could with the NT1. And that's why I think a lot of people actually go for this. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive in. I'm going to show you the kind of inner workings with everything, show you how everything works. That way if you decide to get the NT1 for yourself, you'll know exactly what to do. So the first thing that we're going to go over is the pop filter itself. Um, the pop filter is a great tool. It's used for a lot of big type of mics like this, studio type quality mics. Um, and it allows the user to actually talk into the mic really closely without any weird distortions. Uh, a lot of people that use like the B sound or the P sound actually project like a puff of air um, that will get picked up by the mic and cause like a, a low deep bass type sound. Uh, something sort of like this where it goes 
like that and you blow into it or something or if we're talking like a or a and you know how it blows the air into it i know this looks really weird um but yeah it does that and the pop filter will actually keep you from talking when you go puh or buh like it disperses it to where it's still that nice clear sound uh, without the weird distortion effect so the pop filter is something really nice uh, the nt1 mic itself is a very quiet mic as you saw in the sample recordings uh, it allows you to get really intimate with it uh, t cancels out all the background noise and just picks up the user's voice or if you're singing or anything like that it will pick up that perfectly um, and then coming off of that, I have an XLR cable going up and into uh, the PreSonus AudioBox i1. And what that is, it's a USB interface that'll turn this XLR cable into a USB uh, cable that can be read by the computer. That way you can record uh, using the Audacity and whatnot. Um, it's got a few settings and stuff here. The main one that you need to worry about um, is the amplifier settings um, and you can do that basically when you're talking I don't know if you can see it but right now there's a green uh, thing coming up right here but if I were to talk really loud it starts turning red um, you basically it allows you to dial in and when it turns red the amplified signal is a little bit too loud and you'll start to see a little bit of distortion so um, those that's pretty much the only thing you need to worry about with that the main use for it is of course like I said to move it uh, to turn your condenser mic here your studio mic from an XLR cable into a USB one. Um, so other than that, the only other thing that you're going to need is a stand. And I've actually just decided to go with a universal stand. Uh, Rode actually has one that you can do that'll screw into your desk. But I've got a nice desk here and I didn't want to ruin it. Uh, so I just went with a clamp mount instead. You can get them real cheap. I've provided the link to you uh, where you can actually find the exact one that I've got here. It works perfectly well, allows me to move the mic uh, away from me towards me and stuff like that uh, so I highly recommend it and it goes perfect with the shop mount and everything like that so um, other than that that's pretty much it this is the old mic we can throw that out we don't need that anymore this is the new one hopefully your new commentaries for me will be a lot more crystal clear you'll get a lot more intimate um, recordings with me and you'll hear my voice a little bit better not hear the weird white noise and such so I'm really excited about that um, I did that for you guys and such but I did promise at the beginning of the video I think that I would have one other way to show you uh, if you're especially if you're on a budget if you're starting out on YouTube um, something that you probably already have that you could use for recording that actually surprisingly does really decent audio so I'm gonna go ahead and get set up with that and I'll be right back so something that you can use if you're on a budget and you don't have the money to get any kind of mic whatsoever you can actually use something uh, like I'm using right now you can hear the voice this is the exact audio recording as I'm recording it right now I'm using my phone in the headset with the mic that actually came with it um, now this is an iPhone 6 uh, it does have a mic, it does have the voice memo, you can use an Android or anything like that. The mic qualities in these headphones nowadays are actually really good. Uh, so if you're first starting out on YouTube and you don't have a headset and you don't have the money to buy a mic or any kind of thing like that, uh, you can actually use your phone and um, record on it and then just move your files over to the computer when you're ready to edit the video. It works perfectly. Um, it's perfect for any kind of commentaries. The only downside is you can't do like multiple commentaries with Skype calls and such because obviously you have to have a way to record Skype. And I'm not sure if there's an app out there or not that you might want to do some research on it. There could be. Uh, I just hadn't had the time to do any kind of research because I don't necessarily need to have it. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. You can use one of these three methods. You hear all the audio quality different samples of each type of recording that you can do. Uh, so take this bit of knowledge. Hopefully it helps you in some form or another on when you, anything that you might need in the future, for, whether it's a purchase or if you're ready to just start YouTube and stuff like that. Um, you can have a good know of what type of audio interface you need to use for your mic. Um, but that's going to be it for me this Tech Tuesday. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, feel free to drop a message to me down at the bottom in the comment section or message me on Twitter using the hashtag ITFox. Until next time, stay foxy, everybody, and I will see you all later. Bye, guys.